So the first question is very simple for all of you. How should we define, or how would you define, reform in education based upon your educational lens, changing from what to what? Mr. Sir? Thank you very much, and thank you very much for hosting uh, the event. And thank you most of all to all of you for, for giving up your evening to be here. It demonstrates a level of urgency that I think the issue uh, uh, deserves. So i tell you the first thing I think reform means. I think reform means being honest. Um, and I think we are not as a country and not um, as a society. But if this is a country based on the fundamental idea of equality of opportunity, equality of access to the good things in life, and if public education is intended to be the great catalyst for that, for children, regardless of means, regardless of zip code, if that is the ideal, it is a great big lie that we are delivering on that. And we need to be incredibly, incredibly honest about that. We also need to be honest about the following. There are lots and lots of interests that are represented in education. Many of them, if not all of them, are entirely legitimate. They're the interests of educators, they're the interests of districts, they're the interests of people uh, who have a business stake um, in, in education, and they're the interests of children. I have the absolute easiest job in this discussion, and that is, and I'm very clear about this, I only represent the children of New Jersey. I do not represent educators, I do not represent districts. They have plenty of advocates on their, on their, on their behalf. So what do I mean by reform? First thing we need to do is recognize that when, for example, as is true in this city, 22% of the children who start the ninth grade graduate four years later having passed a relatively easy exit exam called the HESPA, then we need to be incredibly direct and honest about that. I think there are four things that reform means. They have to do with people, accountability, competition, and empowerment. And very quickly, we have to do everything in our power to secure and keep the best educators in the world, and we're not doing that right now. We have to hold people accountable for results, including educators, including parents, including children, and we can't shy away from consequences for failure. We need to give parents the power to choose the option that's best for their school, not what's best for the district or the community or whatever interests are implicated, but giving parents the power to make the choices that are best for their schools, and we have to empower our educators to make decisions. We can't smother them with bureaucracy and rules and regulations, hold them accountable, and give them the power to make decisions to unleash their innovation and creativity. Thank you. So I, I, I like to always answer this question almost on, on a day's basis from a student's perspective. So to me, ed reform revolves starting the day off going into a facility that's worthy of, of really hosting our children in an excellent environment, kind of speaking to the opening remarks that we have facilities that can meet today's curriculum needs. Providing, and, and, and some of these things are going to seem like, you know, why is she saying this, but they're important to talk about. A breakfast program that's available to all of our students. And some people will say, well, why? That's not even at reform. Well, in districts where I represent, it is. Because when households are broken, children need to be fed. And so our schools have to create that kind of artificial environment in a way where we're going to have a student who's prepped and ready to go. It means that we're starting the day and we're extending the day because I'm a huge proponent of a longer school day, longer school year. That that child has access to the best possible individual in the classroom because time and time and again research has shown that the one thing that a student can, can you can have the best books you can have the best technology it's the best teacher in the classroom that will create excellence in education that they are um, given an opportunity to experience different things in a way where we haven't really undertaken that there is greater conversation in the classroom, that there is preschool education that is the, one of the only evidence-based practices that we have seen that scientifically works. A lot of the concepts that we're talking about are things that certainly we're going to roll up our sleeves and engage in, but this is evidence-based, that when our children start going to school at an early age, that they are excelling at much greater rates than they were to their counterparts who are not starting in preschool. So that's for the student, that when they graduate senior year, that New Jersey has a policy of being schizophrenic for residents of New Jersey who are 
of non-citizen status, even though they could have potentially been in the school district for 10 years and we pay for them, and yet they cannot afford to go to an institution like this because we don't reward them with in-state tuition. That is at a reform. From the accountability perspective is, we must ensure that the most important career, which is the profession of teachers, is elevated in a way that is supported and that is honored. People say today, oh, you're a teacher. Let's take it to the level when someone says, oh, you're a teacher, my goodness. And that requires levels of change in dynamics and accountability. It means a change to tenure reform in a way where we are really compelling individuals to be accountable, not set on a mantra of three days in a year, but set on a paradigm that takes that individual to the length of their career. That as long as they're offering from the souls of their well-being to ensure that that student is performing at the best of their ability, that they will be guaranteed a position in any school district. And all the other things that go with it, it's easy to just really focus on the campus grounds of a school and say what is every form. But as a community, we must embrace greater things. Some are academies for freshmen who are going into high school, which are gonna make a dynamic change. Extended years during the summertime, churches that are offering ed programs, social groups that are providing health issues. I mean, it's such a broad task that we have at hand, but for the first time, I think the greatest thing that has occurred is that when you are talking about tenure, which is just due process, or you're talking about reform in our schools, families are having these conversations around the dinner tables where we were not having them before. Thanks. Well, thank you. Um, I think for me, education reform means making sure that our school uh, systems educate our children by any means necessary. I mean, really being outcome driven. Bottom line, the entire purpose, uh, the, reason, uh, the reason that the state, the federal government, localities uh, invest in education because it's fundamental to the future of the country, it's fundamental to the future of our children. And so at the bottom line, if we're not producing a result, we're at minimum in 2011, 100% of our children are graduating from high school. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't want 100% graduating from college. If we're not producing that result, we have a problem. And, and nor, as the commissioner said, we have about a 54% graduation rate, and about 22% of our kids can pass an exam, which is basically a ninth grade exam. That's unacceptable. If someone told me only 54% of our kids graduate from college, I would say that's unacceptable in 2011. Our kids have to compete with, with kids and adults all over the planet. And the notion that we can only get half to graduate from college, to me, would be obscene. We only get half out of high school, but half of them can only pass the high school exit exam. So that means we have a lot of work to do. And for me, this is very personal uh, because I come from a family that's not only deeply rooted in the city of Newark, but deeply rooted in Newark public schools. You know, my grandmother graduated from Barrington High School 63 years ago at a time in which that school prepared her to do almost anything she wanted to do. My older aunt graduated from Shabazz uh, about 40 years ago um, at a time at which uh, the school was less able to pre pre prepare her for what she needed. And by the time my mother graduated from Eastside High, even though we lived in the south ward of the city, my grandmother worked at many political connections she had to get my grand to get my mom into the East Ward. And then by the time I was coming up, and then she had taught in the North Public Schools at that point, and by the time I was growing up, she was like, I'm going to be damned if my grandson uh, comes into this school system because I know what that means for his future. I now have two babies, and I live on Chance Avenue, in Newark, and I don't feel comfortable right now that I can send my children to the school in my neighborhood and know they're going to be prepared for the 21st century. And that's just a fact. So I, I, I totally appreciate what the commission said. We have to be honest about certain kinds of facts. And then it means what do we do to produce the outcome? Because if we're really committed to the outcome, then by any means necessary, we need to do what's required to prepare our children to achieve the outcome. And I absolutely mean it, believe it means uh, empowering our educators at the highest level. We have some tremendous educators uh, in our urban school system who do God's work every day. Uh, but then like in any organization, got some others who really shouldn't be there. I mean, and I don't know why, when it comes to schools, we seem to get into these political debates where we can't recognize what's obvious with any group of human beings, whether it's in this room or any organization. You got some people who are great, who no matter what you do, they're gonna be unbelievable. You got some people who are in the middle, who need certain kinds of incentives and motivations, and you can get them to go from okay to good or great. They got some people on the bottom who really don't want around you. And we have to be able to differentiate in terms of not only staff, but also schools, just like our school system. We have some great schools, 
Um, and they're God's gift. We have some good ones where we need to provide some additional support to get them from okay to good or great. Then you got some hard ones where you really got to say, we got to make some hard decisions. Should that school exist? They're not, they're not achieving their purpose. So, so I think it's very important that, that we structure the way in which we deliver public education in a way that is cons that first is designed to achieve the outcome. 100% of kids graduate from high school, period. We can't lose any, any child. I got two babies, 50% graduation rate. So I'm supposed to say, which, which one I'm gonna pick, my, my son or my baby girl, in terms of who's gonna just get out of high school in 2011, that's outrageous. So, so my point is, that is unacceptable. We have to do everything that's possible to reform our system. And that means a lot of different things. It means make sure our system has the resources it needs to be successful, because that's a challenge in many of our schools. It means make, make, making sure our educators have the resources they need uh, to be successful. Um, it means empowering them uh, uh, to be successful. And I do also believe that I think parents should have some options within the public school framework um, so that, uh, that, that they can choose something else uh, when the school doesn't perform. And it's also the case, I believe, that if we can bring competitive pressure to bear in the system, uh, that we can begin to break down some of the politics and patronage, because that's a, another bold fact that sometimes we don't want to acknowledge, which is if you just want to depend on elected officials, so parents don't have options, so you're going to just depend on elected officials to make the right choice for, ch for children, that's a very dangerous bet. Uh, that you want to make. I'd rather bet on parents, allowing parents to make some choices uh, as that creating a system that's going to be better for kids than one in which we depend upon elected officials to make all the decisions. And then, by the way, very few of them even put their own kids in the system because they themselves recognize we have a lot of work. So, so that's kind of my vision around it.